guys, thank you so much. Uh, would you do me a favor and introduce yourselves to the camera? Yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie Hobson, and I am one of the creators of Win or Lose. Hi, and I'm Michael Yates, and I'm the other co-creator of Win or Lose. And I'm David Lally. I am the producer of Win or Lose. God, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> so and weirdly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For anyone who doesn't know much about Win or Lose, could you please give us a brief overview of it? and also your mission with the show. Yeah, a brief overview is, it kind of started from us wanting to explore the idea of everyone has a unique perspective on life. And so what if you could kind of walk in someone else's shoes, like you're everyone from like a parent, a teacher, your friend that you think you know so well, but maybe they have more going on that meets the eye. And, um, and we really just thought animation is the perfect medium to do this because you can really show what characters are feeling um, visually. And um, yeah, the, you want to talk about the mission? <laughs> <laughs> Take the hard one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think uh, we talked a lot about just like uh, subjective experiences. And um, like me and Carrie were office mates on Toy Story 4. We were both story artists on that film. And a lot of times we would come out of a meeting with different impressions of how that meeting went. Like I would say it went well, and she'd be like, that was a disaster. And that was something that really fascinated us with like, it's interesting how you can both be in the same room and experience something completely different. And like, how, what if we could tell a story where you could actually see that and feel that out? And that kind of expanded outward into the entire show. And this is a series. Yes. Yeah, so that's a big difference than trying to develop a feature, right? Yeah, very different. Yeah, so how was that for you guys? Um, I think developing a series was actually really exciting at the time. I think we at were... At the time. <laughs> <laughs> at the time. <laughs> now, still exciting, just, yeah, yeah. just tired. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. You can take a nap if you want. We'll pass, it, pass the mic on. Yeah, yeah I think it was, it was like a, a new experience for us, like working in feature, and we really wanted to show, like get into telling like a longer form story, an ensemble cast, and just like playing with that format of like each episode is kind of intertwined. So the writing of it kind of was more um, not, I guess, complicated and just more interesting where it was a lot of like back and forth, like this episode, you'll see this character's perspective. The next one you see the next and that gives you more information about this character that you watched. And so it was just like that whole idea was wow. really exciting for us. Um, I guess that we were like first time writers. We really got to learn how to break episode structure and, and just kind of dive into like, you know, we had a lot of like using our story team as well, mm -hmm. just like the, the red thread from this, you know, from this episode to this card over here, like what's, where are the points of crossover and uh, yeah, just diving into that format, which we all love. We really love TV. Yeah, I would say from a production point of view, just the, the sheer size of 148 minutes being like longer than a feature film, it's just a lot of animation to create. And then with the show, we have these eight different protagonists rather than putting everything behind one main character, suddenly we have eight. And it's just like, how do you, how do you develop wow. them, make them all appealing and give them all their own visual metaphors? And in many cases, some of them have multiple visual metaphors, which is just cool. But I think the, the most special thing about it was how excited the entire studio because we made it with the same crews that we make our feature films with in, in Emeryville and the way everyone just kind of came out with that same level of excitement to just to try something different they were just so excited that like we're gonna make a series cool like what are the challenges like let's just take it on and like everyone was just so fearless in the approach which was just I think once we got our crew together it was like okay we can do this which is really cool eight main characters yeah Guys, what happened? <laughs> What's going on here? Eight um, main characters. If you're gonna do a series, you gotta do something. A feature can't yeah. do very, or, you know, very easily. And that was the thing. Like just right off the bat, Mike and I knew we wanted to do. Um, and I, th I think what's great is each character is a little bit of both of us. Um, and so, it helped hopefully make them feel like complex characters. We'll see what the audience thinks, but. Um, you know, because we're bringing a little bit of, uh, not only ourselves, but just people we know and the, the light things we've experienced. And um, I think we're just like really hungry to do as much as we can. So if we could have, we could probably would have done 20 characters. Wow, love it. <laughs> just, just to love it too much. Yeah, we started out with a lot more and then over the process, <laughs> they, 
kind of started to fuse into each other, and then some of them just became like background characters or secondaries, because um, I guess overall there, it feels like there's more than eight because there's the world is has so many reoccurring characters every episode. But yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I mean, it must be crazy just hearing you guys talk there. Okay, you're talking about longer production. You're talking about far more animation. You're also talking about a story structure that is episodic, right? It's not a feature film. It's not, you know, your nice curve, anything like that. Where did this come from? Why was it a series <laughs> and not a, why did, was it a feature? Were you pitching it as a series or did you think you could never get it as a feature? Or was it kind of a new time and you were just like, let's try something new? Yeah, I think we, we always pitched it as a series. Okay. And I think it was a little bit of, uh, the opportunity presented itself with Disney Plus, and we were like, oh, this would be a great time to, to try something. Mm -hmm. And I think for us, it was just an exciting unknown. Yeah. It's like kind of stepping out there, and uh, like Carrie said, we love TV, so we were watching a lot of stuff, and just like, man, there's so much good stuff out there. Yeah. You kind of just want to get in on that and try that out. <laughs> <laughs> Put the stamp on that. <laughs> the Pixar world out in TV, yeah. So when did you guys, have you finished it? We, what is the timeline like? Yeah, we're pretty much, we're, we are picture lock and we're pretty much done. We're just in sound mix right now. Um, yeah, you want to add to that? Yeah, <laughs> throw, throw the microphone away. <laughs> no, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're mixing all the episodes and so yeah, we're just finalizing sound and, and music and yeah, the show will release in December. So very yeah, exciting. Very exciting. Yeah. You two guys were story artists, right? Mm -hmm. Big change to be a director of a series? That's my question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, was, it, it was a big change. I think um, I really love when you get to take on, because uh, I was in art, um, I did many different types of roles, and then went into story. And I just love constantly like changing what you're learning within animation, because every single department is bringing so much expertise. You just, And that's the best part of being a director, is when you're in story, you I really did not have a full understanding of, and I mean, I still don't, but like of just every department, but at least I got to witness their, their mastery and like their expertise and interact with them. And just at Pixar that we do everything in a house and then we get to actually direct our animators as actors is like a like wonderful experience. And I would say like having an equal co-director is also like a really wonderful thing because you're truly bringing like two um, opinions to each decision. Um, and we did not like split things up, we, we went at it together. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I think the other big difference yeah, between- Yeah, it's surprising you agreed with it. <laughs> 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 I disagree, yeah, sorry. <laughs> she said something really great there. Yeah, I don't exactly. know if we got that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wanna repeat that part? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think the other big difference between story and director was it's like this ability to, uh, you make something on your own and then you make something with other people and it's like they're constantly plussing out whatever your thought was. So it always felt like you come in with an idea and then the team would come back with something even better. And that was just like a constant joy in every department and it just felt like the job was basically just getting people excited. It's like, if I can get into your mind and get you excited about this, <laughs> then you're gonna do something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. then you're gonna do something better than I can even think of. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just like, yeah, let's do that. We're so it was really... Lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I call it like, it's, it's basically inception, yeah. you know? Yeah. You're just like, here's so the idea, yeah. let's see what you do. <laughs> you're stealing people's dreams. <laughs> but it's funny because this bred out of a different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. so, but now you're, as directors, do you have different perspectives walking into each shot or are you kind of aligned on your vision? Mm, like uh, uh, with each other? With the or floor. I do, yeah, <laughs> with, with each other, sorry, Mike, yeah. That was me, uh, I'm sorry. No, yeah. you're fine. <laughs> yeah, with um, each other, yeah. I think for the most part, like we're writing the show together, we talk a lot about intention throughout. Um, I would say there's occasional times where we would disagree on something. Yeah. And a lot of times the rule was just like, prove it out. So we would go in to edit and watch it and just kind of prove if the idea is better or not versus arguing about it. And that saved a lot of time. And then it just made things like yeah. a lot more efficient. Yeah. yeah, a lot of talking in rooms. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, 
all right, we disagree on this, let's just see. Let's just watch it and see. And then I'll be like there watching it angrily and I was like, okay, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then we go with that idea. Is it like, that sounds like a process of elimination really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, did that kind of stretch it out then? Does it take longer? Or you said you save time, but yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, no, no. Uh, well, it does save time and that you're also just to have a, a true check um, and balance that's an equal. Um, so if, if I felt like I was giving a, you know, I was giving a note, sometimes Mike would just be like, I think this is just something that bothers you. You're like, I don't think it's worth it to, you know, it's really like, a, how much are you going to tax your crew and, and ask them to, to do a note is, is a constant weight on a director. And I think it's really great to have two people to make sure that you're keeping a high standard, but you're, you're, it's maintaining a bar, but it's, um, uh, something you both agree upon. And I think that's the thing is we don't, it wasn't about the ego of like my vision versus your vision. It was just kind of like, well, I really respect your taste. So if you're saying it's good, then I trust you. Mm. It's support as well, isn't it? Because it's hard to just do something by yourself. It's good to have someone else to rub your back and vice versa, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and a producer to mm -hmm. clear the way. Yeah, both of our <laughs> <He rubs laughs> both of our Support everybody. But no, that's totally, <laughs> <laughs> that's totally true. I think we had to keep each other honest whenever we tried something that like, I think we would ask ourselves like, is it is it better or is it just different? And there's just a subtle, subtle difference between those two things sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But really trying to be honest and say, is it going to be worth taking the time to try this idea, uh, or what's like the the quickest way we can get an answer, um, whatever that takes. And so I think we tried that, you know, as often as we possibly could. But you know, once something was working, I think you both did a good job, no matter where the idea came from, to acknowledge that that was a good idea. Yeah. But you're really good at like at like being. A true creative producer that actually wants to get the best story, not mm -hmm. just the cheapest story. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. This is actually for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's beautiful, guys. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering then, all this nice talk, we're at the end of the journey, <laughs> OK? Challenges. Let's talk a bit about them. What have we got? Tell you what, I'll pass the mic here. Oh, okay. So you can start sharing it around. Great. Yeah. You can start. <laughs> Oof. Uh, I mean, clearly, it, as we said at the top, just structurally from a feature film, knowing that, you know, each episode wasn't going to be wrapped up and you're not going to fully arc a character. And we want things to end with a hook or question because we have a big finale coming up and we want the resolutions to happen there. Um, and we don't want it to be as predictable. So I think even like from a story standpoint, that was like not only a learning for us, but even some of our, for the whole studio in terms of how we give notes and how we approach storytelling. Um, and of course we all watch TV shows, but that doesn't mean we always knew how to make them. And so we did a lot of like, you know, talking to others and, you know, uh, Andrew Stanton was one of our executive producers and has directed a lot of television and he had such great insights and, and advice for us along the journey, which was super helpful. Um, I don't know, any other, like from a, from a story editorial standpoint challenges? Uh, I think the biggest challenge was just, this was our first time doing it, first time writing, first time directing. So there was a lot of, at least for me, a lot of like imposter syndrome and just kind of learning on the job. Um, and I think that was just a, something that every day just trying to get better at like talking to each other asking for feedback like how was i in that room did i sh clam up and not say enough and like her being honest with me about it like yeah you could have said more and then just learning through that process i would say was the the biggest challenge i was very kind in the way i said it though. yeah very very <laughs> kind i was like oh you know you can you can be a little bit better there that's a really bad impression <laughs> We'll share this one, yeah. Um, yeah, biggest challenge. Okay, so I think, you know, being a, a director, um, your, your job is being in meetings all day and, like, you know, mining the brilliance, but you're also, you know, you're giving notes that ultimately lead to approvals. And I think the thing that's really hard is just trying to make sure that, kind of like you said before, you're, you're not just making things different, you're making it better and taking into account um, the quality of life of your crew and that they're still engaged and excited about what you're making. Um, so that's, that's a really hard thing that weighs on me, like just the anxiety of trying to make sure that you're making good decisions top down that are make the best and then 
Another moment I was trying to think the other day that we like was hard because actually it was a really I'm being honest it actually was a really enjoyable experience and I I think if you talk to people who worked on it they genuinely had a good time. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I, what I hear. That's what they say to my face, at least. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. You know, <laughs> this, this whole background panel yeah. opens. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're all, all frowning. Yeah. It's an intervention. Yeah. We've been they needed to tell us. you. <laughs> <laughs> they loved us. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, there was a point, I think, when we were, to, you know, and I'm maybe a lot of uh, features experience this, too, or, or shows, but um, we were towards the end, um, and we... We had an approval on an episode, but we ourselves didn't feel like it was fully there yet. Um, so we were still working out story, but we had already wrapped our story team. Um, and our DP of layout was like stepped up and was willing to go from script pages mm -hmm. into that. And it's, you know, that of course is not the most efficient method at all times, but it got the job done and, and that was really brilliant. And I think what was really hard is we were also trying to cut runtime while figuring out the story. So that was the like the cherry on top that that's why I would say it made it the hard time because yeah. we were like, Lally, how can we do this? But I feel like it's good that you always challenged us was like we really need to to cut some time yeah. here. At some point I think it was a probably like a 160 minute series and oh it was just becoming a lot to animate. But yeah, yeah, examples like our Lally DP uh, Patrick Lynn who's like one of the most like senior camera DPs that we have at the studio and worked on like Toy Story 4 recently, to have someone with all of his feature film experience come in and also like show up and be like, I really want to tackle this problem with you guys. We were like, okay, but we're new directors <laughs> and producers, right? Are you sure, Patrick? And he really showed up in a big way. And so we had such like great leaders, uh, Bob Moyer, who was the VFX soup on uh, Toy Story 4 as well, helped like take on the challenge of all the characters and sets. And Noah Klocek, our production designer, designing a world not just that um just that looked beautiful but that for every set we built we knew we could scale it and, and flesh out a world because i think we you know we watch a lot of animated shows on tv and i think you see a lot of similar things due to budget constraints things like that where the the camera is stationary uh you return to the same set a lot things like this that are you know uh economy choices and it was really nice to try to put really dynamic cameras in and uh, kind of bring in more of that feature film quality into the series, and hope, hopefully people feel that when they watch it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll pass both mics. <laughs> yeah, both. Yeah, exactly. I think um, hearing you guys talk about this, right, you <laughs> raise your eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm curious about the style then because you've mm -hmm. just talked about it, right? You guys are story artists, mm -hmm. which means that you come at it from an illustrative point of view. So I'm really curious about the kind of style that you've developed on this. Is it uh, you just found a beautiful style or are you trying to support the story or how did you guys get to where it is? Um, I think at the, the, the start, we knew that we wanted a more caricatured show because that's what we love just in terms of so th this is a character-based show. It's about, um, and that's why we just love working with our animators, just because it's about the performance, the feeling like you relate to them, and, and we wanted to make sure that we had characters that could be expressive, that our animators could have fun with, and you feel like um, it's a kind of caricatured sincerity, so it's not just cartoony, it's, it's cartoony with like intention. Um, so f I think from the start, that was important to us too, and then working with Noah, our production designer, he really embraced also just um, finding the constraints of, um, you know, we do have a set we return to, you know, what and what can we do with like uh, 2D flat backgrounds and things that, um, not natural hair, and things that we were totally on board for, um, for like an economy reason, but also just because we, we like stylized things and that's pretty cool to us, right? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, uh <laughs> I think the other the other big thing that we talked a lot about early on was we kind of wanted to explore um, darker stories as well and having a more fun uh, exterior look to the show kind of helps you to to ease into that like uh, you can kind of do more real uh, real life's kind of things that happen to people or things that people experience and it doesn't come across as um, sad or 
uh, automatically like pushing it away, like I don't want to be in that world. It kind of sneaks up on you a little Basically bit. Basically tricking all the moms. Yeah, there's, yeah. An, access <laughs> a, there's an accessibility to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is, is powerful, because if we can find a way to make some of those stories and themes a little bit more accessible, I think you're going to have an audience that really feels like, oh, wow, OK, I haven't seen Pixar or Disney tell a story quite like that before. And so we really tried to do that with the show. So hopefully that lands. Yeah, like even the episode we showed today is, if you were to describe it after the fact, it's the life of a single mom and the struggles that she's going through raising two kids on her own. Who was a teenage mother herself. Yeah. Um, if you, I mean, if you, yeah, pay attention. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, just the, the reality is like she was a teenage mom and mm -hmm. she's a single mom. And um, the, the scariest thing in the world to her is that her daughter would um, turn out like her, that we, we hear that in the episode. Um, but, uh, and that was just something that was, I think, the, the, when you get notes, there's just one thing that we, on each episode, had to agree on, like, whatever notes we get, we will be flexible. What, there's one core thing we're holding on to, mm -hmm. and that's meaningful to us. And because, and okay, so like he said, we like to tell dark stories. Maybe they're a little too much at times. So we had to be, we had to like learn to like, okay, I guess we can't <laughs> do that. I would get a lot of looks in editorial, like, can we do this? Is this? <laughs> you gotta just try it, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then pull back, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so just like holding on to those things and then the, the look really helps you get away with stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds actually very exciting. I wasn't there this morning. I mistimed everything, and uh, I was just like, well, yeah, I know, it's not, I don't mind, because I'll get to enjoy it as a whole. So what I'm trying to really dig into is your guys' perspectives and your point of view in telling the story and the reason why it's important to you guys, which I think you've shared. Um, but, you know, if I was to say one thing from the way you're talking about the show is probably support. Like, I've never heard of something like that with great leadership stepping in to help you guys, to support you guys all the way through. You're supporting each other, uh, which is good, <laughs> necessary even. Um, so that's a beautiful, really beautiful thing. And I think I'll just leave it there then. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys have anything else to add? Do you want to say, get across? You've said it all. Thank you for your time you. and your, those chairs look great. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> you look like we're on a spaceship. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Yeah. Or like a, I don't know, it makes us look like super pompous. <laughs> yeah. You should start the interview, every other interview, by turning around. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's not too late. That's actually a great, great yeah, intro. Okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm Carrie Hobson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can end every interview now. Yeah, yeah. just turn around there real quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't say anything, it's like... We, we just turn. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks so much guys. Yeah, thank it was you. such a pleasure. Yeah.